The following is a paid program and does not necessarily reflect the views or ideas of the staff or management of KWSH or the 110 Broadcast Group. Good morning and welcome to the Seminole Nation radio program. It's Edwin Marshall here with you today. I'm usually joined by Jeremy Fultz, but today I've got a couple of special guests on, in the studio and are, are a group of young ladies uh, with us in the studio. So Jeremy's operating the camera. Uh, it's good to be here this late November morning. We're getting closer to Thanksgiving, and uh, actually it's Thanksgiving week. I uh, look forward to turkey and ham and dressing and... Pumpkin pies and all that good stuff. Uh Moment Mr. Bo White Killer, my wicked skin on my communication director gals at Marundon. Man my wicked skin on my home cut no mari four oh five three eight two one o one o mad marundo hunger man my week is kind of as more kids we die as always all right we're going to get started with the church announcements this week and uh this is the week of november the 24th uh i want to first of all i want to introduce a couple of ladies to you and then we'll introduce the whole group or i want to introduce this lady to you uh the director of Native Praise Choir, uh, Augusta Smith, uh, Augusta Kenny Smith. Uh, I'm proud to say Augusta's my cousin. She's the director of this group, and many of you know them. Many of you have heard them. They travel all over Indian country. They sing hymns in the Muscogee, the uh, Chickasaw Choctaw, the Muscogee Seminole, and the Cherokee language. And um, and they are, they're always adorned real nice in their tribal dress, depending on their respective tribes. And I want to welcome you ladies to the studio this morning. Thank you for inviting us. Okay. Uh, you know what? It's a real treat. Being Thanksgiving week, I think it's real appropriate. Uh, I think that uh, you guys bring such a festive uh, feeling to anywhere that you're singing. Of course, you're singing for the glory of the Lord. and uh, But you're not entertaining, but at the same time, it brings good feelings and good vibes to everybody that listens to you. And that's the purpose of it. You know, mm-hmm. it's called music ministry, right? Amen. All right. Uh, but anyway, Gus, I'm going to go through this list. We'll be talking to you more later. and We're going to get the pleasure of listening to you ladies sing, even though this is just a small representation. Four of the ladies are here. Gus, how, ordinarily, how many total are there all over Oklahoma? We have a total of 60 women. 60? Sing, in, native women who sing from across Oklahoma. Right. We represent uh, 19 tribes yeah. in our choir. And we represent 23 of our Indian Baptist churches across Oklahoma. Oh, that's great. That's great. All right. Hey, I'm going to do church announcements. Uh, These are churches that are meeting this week. Now, there's a lot of churches that have service every Sunday. But these are the churches that have fourth and eighth Sunday meetings this weekend. And, Gus, I'm going to have you to help me by telling me where a couple of these are. I think I pretty much know where they're all at. Uh, Tell me where Butler Creek is. Butler Creek is over by Muskogee, north of uh, North Shakota. Of, north mm-hmm. of Shakota, okay, yeah. between Shakota and yes. okay. Muskogee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, Cedar Creek, you follow, which is out here between Seminole and Conowa. Uh, Grave Creek Baptist Church is down by Hidgetty. Uh Greenleaf Baptist Church is west of Okima. And uh, Seminole Hidgetty is uh, north of Seminole. Uh, New York Baptist is east of Okima. Randall Mission near is northwest of Henrietta. Sand Creek Baptist Church east of Wetumpka. Sand Springs, uh, which is north of Gore. You guys ever get to Sand Springs very often? Not very often. I've been there a couple of times. Yeah, we used to go there when uh, uh, Reverend Phillips was there. Uh, yeah, they used to have gospel gospel singings. Yeah, it's been a long time. All right. 
uh, Tallahassee, which is north of Omogi, Tallahassee Methodist. The Wahley Baptist, north of Dustin. Tukpofka, northeast of Calvin. Uh, Tukabuchi Methodist, north of Holdenville. Tuskegee, which is west of you. I bet you know a little bit about Tuskegee, we don't do. you, Marlene? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we woke Indian Baptist, which is northwest of Jaeger. Uh, uh, so those are the church meetings for this week. Like I said, there may be uh, other churches that have Sunday school meetings every Sunday, but uh, afterwards you may want to go somewhere and visit. And they, all these churches will be glad to have you, and especially being Thanksgiving. I bet every one of them's having a big dinner That's this right. week, don't you? Possibly yeah. so. All right. All right. Also, coming up. November the 30th, the Ufala Band will be meeting from 11.30 to 2.30 at the Sasaqua Community Building. On December the 2nd, there's a Band Chiefs meeting at 6 o'clock at the Council House. Also on December the 2nd, Nuskup Harjo Band has a special call meeting at 6 o'clock at the Transportation Building. On December the 3rd, Ocheesy Band has a meeting from 7 to 9 at the North Community Building. On December the 5th, Fos Hutchie Band has a meeting at River Mist from 6 to 10. On December the 5th, Tallahassee Band is meeting from 6 to 9 at the North Community Building. Also on December the 5th, Tuskegee Harjo Band is meeting from 6 to 9 at the Council House. Also on December the 5th, Tom Palmer Band is uh, meeting from 6.30 to 9 and as of yet location to be determined. Uh, December the 5th, the Wally Band will be meeting from 7 o'clock or at 7 o'clock. There's going to be a potluck dinner associated with this one at the North Community Building. All you the Wally Band members want to be sure and bring a pot and come on out. On December the 6th, Chiaha Band is having a meeting from 6 to 9 at the Council House. And then on December the 7th is the General Council meeting. It starts at 10 o'clock at the Council House. You guys ever go to the... Uh, committee meetings or band meetings or i haven't gone recently yeah i have yeah I've okay all right seminole nation social services department presents the golden angel tree of the seminole nation uh please return all new and unwrapped gifts to the seminole nation social services no later than monday december the 16th you can choose a tag from their angel tree, turn it around, and you'll see a list of items needed for our elderly. Now, this angel tree is unique. It's for the elders, the golden age angel tree. A list of items needed for our elderly, from socks to slippers to house coats with zippers. Help us bring our elders some holiday cheer by adopting a golden angel this year. Oh, yeah, what a great yeah, rhyme. <laughs> All right. That's at the Seminole Nation Social Services Department. You can call them at 405-257-6257. Also, Seminole Nation Head Start, Early Head Start will be coordinating an angel tree for all enrolled students of the Head Start program. Uh, as many of you know, the program serves low-income families. Please consider sponsoring a child in the program. Uh, the angels can be selected at the administrative office located next to the Mixsuki Mission Gymnasium. Uh, must be returned no later than December the 18th with the angel attached. Uh, for more information, call 405-234-5265. Hey, look here. Free Thanksgiving dinner on Thanksgiving Day from November 28th to, from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock at the Wewoka Civic Center. That's located at 123 South Miccosukee. This is for anybody and everybody around the Wewoka listening area that uh, wants a place to go on Thanksgiving. Uh, you, for more information, you can call 405-824-0617. This is made possible through volunteers and donations throughout the community. Uh, you know, uh, special thanks to Harris Contractors and Woodman Life Lodge 266. I know that Becky Stone is somehow associated with the coordination of this event. I think it's a great deal. There may be a lot of people, elders that are shut in, maybe doesn't have anywhere to go, or families that may be having some hard luck, aren't going to be able to have a big Thanksgiving dinner. Come on out to the Civic Center on November the 28th from 11 to 1 and have a free Thanksgiving dinner with the community. That's at the Wewoka Civic Center. Great deal. It is. I know Thomasine Yahola is doing one at her home 
in honor of her mother who liked to cook so much. Thomasine's doing a kind of a memorial Thanksgiving dinner for mm-hmm. Pinky. I thought that was a good idea, yeah. too. So Thanksgiving Day, if you've got nowhere to go around with Tumka, get on out there. Seminole Nation CHR Program Blood Drive, Monday, December the 30th from 9 to 2 at the Seminole Nation Veterans Building. Uh, we'll be talking more about that later. To schedule an appointment, call Brooklyn Harris at 405-234-5271. Hey, all donors get a long sleeve. Follow your instinct t-shirt. Real good looking t-shirt. Long sleeve. Um, for more information, call Brooklyn Harris at 405-234-5271. All right, the season has begun for LIHEAP Heating Assistance. Uh, it began November the 18th. You must be enrolled in a federally recognized tribe, any tribe, as long as you live in Seminole County. Household income must not exceed the greater of 60% of the state median income. That's very generous. Uh, you must have your tribal enrollment card, CDIB, and Social Security card verification for everyone in the house. Proof of income for everybody 18 and older. And your most recent heating bill, whether it's natural gas, electric, propane, or firewood, quote. Call them at 405-257-6257. Seminole Nation employees battle at the Mission Basketball Tournament, men's and women's division, Saturday, December the 14th. First and second place will be awarded. For more information, you can call Victor Bear at 405-683-0071. You guys know Victor Bear? <laughs> I've known Victor my whole life, him and his brother Ed. Um, I guess I knew their family ever since they lived in Tulsa a long time ago. Seminole Nation CHR program is hosting a free haircut for all Native Americans within Seminole County. December the 9th at the Miccosukee Mission Gym, there's going to be about four businesses, uh, haircutting businesses, uh, that have volunteered to provide free haircuts, I guess, just in time for Christmas. Got to be <laughs> looking good. good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, that's a Seminole Nation CHR program on December the 9th uh, from 9 to 10 o'clock for senior citizens and from 10 to 12 for age 2 and older. For more information, call Lacey at the CHR program, 405-231-5244. Tribal Recreation Boys and Girls Basketball Camp 2019, December the 29th or 27th at the Mexican Mission Gym from 9 to 1. Deadline is December the 20th. Call Victor Bear at 405-234-5248. Uh, On December the 30th, this is for grades 3 through 8. The first one was grades 1 through 2. Grades 3 through 8 on December the 30th. Camp fee of $10 on both of them. Call Victor Bear at 405-234-5248. Look here. Patchwork sewing class at the North Community Center. Seminole Nation Executive Department and Historic Preservation Office are partnering to present patchwork sewing class. First class starts December the 3rd. Uh, Also, December 10th, 17th, January 7th, January 14th, and ends January 21st. And all projects will be completed at that time. It's from 1 to 3 o'clock at the North Community Center. Um, You know, I don't have a contact number on this, but I'm sure if you'll call the complex and ask for somebody in the executive department uh, or call the Historic Preservation Office, and they'll be glad to give you all more details. All right, old style, three on three men and women basketball tournament. I, hey, look here, Marlene, you could do this, huh? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, yeah, old basketball star, I know you. This is going to be January 3rd and 4th, uh, accepting eight men and eight women teams. Entry fees $125, deadline December 27th, 10 player roster. Uh, for more information, call Benita, Bernita Whitekiller. At 580-665-8002 or Gina Lankford at 405-471-3038. Seminole Nation Cornhole Tournament Sunday, December the 22nd, Mexican Mission Gym. Uh, starts at 1 o'clock. Singles, there's a $15 entry fee. For doubles, a $30 entry fee. Prizes for first and second. Bring your own bags. For more information, call Pacer Low at 918-623-8631 or Victor Bear at 405-683-0071. I just know 
if Dwayne Lowe knew that Pacer was doing this tournament, he'd just roll over right now. You know, Dwayne was a horseshoe pitcher, oh. and he taught Pacer how to play horseshoes. Pacer's pretty good, but he's switching over to cornhole tournament. Dwayne, <laughs> sorry, Dwayne. <laughs> Seminole Nation Princess Committee. That's her cousin's husband, remember? Mm -hmm. Yep, Dwayne Love, yeah. Seminole Nation Princess Committee's annual stomp dance in the Mexican Mission Gym, February the 8th. MC will be Kevin Obamack. Supper starts at 5 o'clock until 6.15. Dance will start at 7. There will be raffles, 50-50s, cakewalks, bender booth space, uh, or $10 plus one donated item. Contact Velma Coker at 405-380-3848. Bernita Whitekiller at 580-665-8002. Gina Lankford at, Lankford at 405-471-3038. All right. And finally, on Saturday, November the 30th, at Holdenville Creek Nation Indian Community Center, Randall the Mechanical Bull. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess every Indian should be a, a, a good bull rider. <laughs> $20 per rider per session. I wonder if there's a prize or something involved with this. Anyway... If you're interested, uh, come on out to wow. Holmville Community Center from 9 to 11 and then from 11.30 to 1.30 to ride Randall the Mechanical Bull, I guess. Wow. <laughs> hey, let's get to our guests. I've been, I've been trying to rush through the news so I could get to this. This is one of my favorite bunch of people right here. Uh, as I mentioned, Augusta Smith is the coordinator of this group, and once again, Augusta, it's great to have you all with us. Finally, I've been looking forward to this for quite a while. But oh, we're glad to be here. Uh, you know, I, uh, I I can't remember where I first heard of you guys. It's probably been five, six, seven years ago. How long have you been together? We've been together twenty years. Twenty years. Well, it's been longer than that. Then it's been long because I've known for a long time that you were doing this. I think maybe when I first heard you guys was five, six, seven years ago. But since then, we've crossed paths many times. Yes, and, we uh, have. I remember at one time, uh, you all joined us in a native hymn singing at Wetumpka Indian Baptist. We had a big crowd yes. that day. I, a big was, crowd. That was a great event. Yeah, it, it was. Really it was. Nice. It was probably ninety-five degrees, and we were, out, we were out. We were out. We were, and you guys all had your Seminole outfits on, and and I know it was sweltering, but you guys, <laughs> you were troopers, you know. And uh, but everybody really enjoyed it, and uh, of course we had several other groups of people, several other churches represented. But I think one of my the biggest highlights of that day was the end of the day when we had the, uh, I guess the the separate the. Uh, Oh, I see. What do we call that? Uh, uh, it's it's a special handshake. The, well, yeah, the right hand of fellowship, and uh, but uh, I think that was very spiritual, very moving, and I think a lot of people weren't expecting that. You know, it was just it was just great. Uh, we have the video of that, and my sister was in that video. Yes. Of course, my yes. sister has passed on, and it's kind of hard to watch. When I first saw it, but now, I mean, I'm I'm glad we preserved that, and mm -hmm. you guys were a big part of that. But you guys have been a big part of stuff all over the United States. Tell me some of the places you've traveled. The choir has traveled extensively throughout uh, the United States and throughout Oklahoma, especially because this is our home state. Uh, we go just about anywhere um, that God leads us to be, and um, we've gone out beyond our. United States. Uh, we've gone to Canada. There's been groups go to Canada. Uh, we've been represented in the Ukraine. Uh, wow. We've been represented in England and Hawaii. One of these days, maybe you'll sing for the Queen, huh? Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> uh, I guess there that, actually know. was a small group that went by Buckingham Palace and they spoke into a microphone and they said that the Queen um, was within the distance of that microphone wow. and so some of the women that were there at that time the smaller group of our choir they sang that's great that's <laughs> great but you sing for the king don't you that's we right. do absolutely right. we absolutely. do absolutely right. uh, that's the whole purpose of what we do keep the thing keep things in perspective tell us a little bit about your sponsorship your origin your foundation okay. organization All right 
There was a lady, a non-native, Willene Pierce, and uh, she had it in her heart. She had a vision for bringing our native women together. She had had experience in working with our native uh, work here in Oklahoma uh, since when she it started when she was a little girl of 12 years old. She started going to uh, vacation Bible schools at the Indian churches uh, with her grandmother, and she kept back coming back every year. Then when she graduated from high school, she was actually from Kansas, but when she graduated from high school, her decision was to go to Oklahoma Baptist University. And um, there she met Joyce. Joyce is here with us, Joyce Narcomy Hamblin. She was, uh, Joyce was in school at Oklahoma Baptist University too at the same time. But Willene was pretty unique because she had such a heart for native people. And she even joined uh, an Indian Baptist church while she was uh, at Shawnee, and she also joined the Indian Gle- uh, Bap- the Indian Club uh, yeah. there at OBU. Excuse me and a moment. So, do you know, have you ever met Hugh Foley? I don't know him, do you? Uh, Hugh Foley is a professor at Rogers State College, or Rogers, I don't know. Oh, what yes, the, I have heard his name. Yeah. Yes. Okay. He, he actually uh, got interested in the Muscogee language uh, kind of as a linguistics thing, and he started studying the language. Then he got into the origin of native hymns, mm-hmm. and he traced it back to Scottish origins, okay. African uh, origins, and uh, just, you know, different groups. And and of course, you know, we haven't always had gospel music among the Indian people, uh, but that's where the Indian people, you know, they got they've got foundation of their songs sometimes in the blues, mm-hmm. even in the blues of Mississippi and, mm-hmm. and back down that way. But uh, Hugh got to study in that. He's got to traveling around to the Indian churches, listening to hymns. You know what? He ended up. He ended up joining Hutchie Jumbo Baptist Church. <laughs> That's great. That's great. You know, and, uh, we're glad to see people who love, who feel that connection and that yeah. love that they have for our native work. I don't know if he'll ever hear this broadcast, yeah. but he does a radio show at Roger State University as well. Yeah. Uh, he also studies uh, blues music and a very diverse guy, uh, Dr. Hugh Foley. Yes. Uh, but uh, I was amazed when I went up to Hutchie Jumbo one day and and. Uh, here come Hugh with a stick, you know, doing a deacon work. And I thought, what? <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I'm going to ask you guys to sing us a song. Sing about uh, two or three, four verses of a song. Then we'll have another couple of words. And then we might extend our time just a little bit and uh, have you sing another song maybe to close us out. Okay. So uh, if you guys, if you ladies want to, uh, if it's possible. To get uh, in behind us. Yeah, okay. if you can get in behind them, and uh, it's we kind, know that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to sing uh, a song that's familiar, actually, in this area of uh, Oklahoma among our Muscogee and um, Seminole people. Uh, this. Could I tell you a little bit about this yes, song? Yes, yes, I know that you know, and you've told me before, and yes. I and I've passed it on to I, the choir. I, I think Please it's do. great. My Please grandfather do. told me this song. I first heard this song from Joe Billy. You guys remember Joe Billy? He was a Seminole. He was a Seminole. And uh, I first heard Joe Billy singing this song, and it sounded rather like Negro spiritual a little bit, you know. And I then later on somebody said, oh, yeah, that was translated from This May Be the Last Time, which is a Negro spiritual. Mm-hmm. This may be the last time. Mm-hmm. So anyway, my grandfather then told me, he said, Edwin, he said that song was translated by a freedman minister Mm -hmm. that was a member of the Muscogee Nation at that time. His name was Reverend Aaron Grayson, and he went to Prairie Spring Baptist Church. Everybody used to know Aaron Grayson. I guess he traveled around the churches. He spoke in Creek. He preached and all that. So knowing knowing the origin of that song is pretty unique. Mm -hmm. And now you all know it, Mm -hmm. uh, or we all know it now. But I'm going to go ahead and let you go ahead. Es poco de somes que tlesco, es poco de somes que tlesco, mi cosa porque apiana. Es poco de somes que tlesco, es poco de somes que it can go, it can go, 
This may be the last time we don't know. I love that song. I love that song. Hey, um, I'm I'm very remiss for not allowing you to introduce these That's, other ladies. I was thinking okay, the same I'm thing, sorry okay? because they're very very important ladies. Go ahead. Yes, beside me is sitting here, uh, Marlene. Marlene. Davis Jackson. Marlene is actually a former Miss Seminole That's right. princess, one of our Seminole princesses. And behind her is Ruth Factor Walker. Ruth is uh, was born and raised in Wewoka, just like me. Marlene's very a prominent Sus- family. Walkers Marlene, and Factors. Yes, Marlene's a Sasaquan. That's right. And uh, behind us is Joyce Narcomy Hamblin. And Joyce is um, my first cousin. Her mom and my dad. Uh, we're brother and sister. Oh, cool. Yes. Hey, you know, I, it, space, limited space allowed us to only have a few people in here. But if you've ever seen these guys on stage, I've seen 28, 30, 35 of them at a time. <laughs> and you say you have 60. Mm-hmm. I bet you rarely or you probably never have the all closest, of them at once. I think the closest we ever had to 60 at all at one time was uh, Falls Creek had their centennial celebration. Uh, and we had 52 there. Yeah. And those are, and and also want to mention that you guys not only sing the Muskogee hymns, but you sing the Choctaw Chickasaw hymns, you sing the Cherokee hymns, you blend some of them with English songs. Correct. Uh, I had the great pleasure, Augusta asked me if I would help her to translate a song, and you know, it really... First, it it scared me. I I was a little scared that I might not do this right. But, you know, I think when when the Lord blesses you, you're going to do what you need to do because it just, like, came to me when Augusta asked me to do this, and I was hesitant. But then when I started doing it, you know, when you pray about things, things happen. It just came to me just like that. And so, um, Augusta, tell us a little bit about what motivated you about this song. At the time, I was ill uh, with Bell's palsy, and I hadn't been able to talk or I sing. I remember that. I c- couldn't talk or sing, and I was uh, so it was a time that was where I was at home, and and that you know if you've ever been ill like that, it gives you a lot of time with the Lord, it gives you time to really hear Him, and maybe listen in ways that you never had before. And during that time, one of the choir members sent me the song, uh, "Give Me Jesus," and she said, "I hope this will bring you ho- comfort and uh, knowing that uh, Jesus is with you." Uh, through this and so as I listened to it and I'd heard this song uh, often on the radio you know or, or through music and I knew I was familiar with it but as I listened to it at that time uh, I'm not a fluent Muskogee language speaker. I'm not. Uh, you know, I admit that, although I heard it in my home growing up. But your but, cousin but, was. But uh, I was, <laughs> yes, thank thank you so much, Mado. And as I was listening to it, though, I heard it differently than I had ever heard it before because I could hear it in our language. I could hear I could hear that and I was just so moved by it and then as it went into chorus I could hear Jesus Amos 
I could mm-hmm. hear it, and and uh, and I just knew that this was something God was giving to this choir, and so that's when I made the phone call to to Edwin and said help me (laughs) give me some help here and uh he listened to it and he sent back messages that he was going to try and it didn't take him very long that he was presenting it to me and he said i've got it for you listen to it see what you think and uh, look at it and uh, sing it over and i did and as i did the tears rolled down my face i was i knew this was something god had he had ordained for us to sing he had he he meant for us to have this Okay, before you sing it, we're going to close the show out with this song that you're talking about. But for all the listeners uh, and for those of you uh, that wait till the show comes on on the rebroadcast at Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock on our Facebook page, the Seminole Nation and the Seminole Nation language page, you'll see that these ladies have very, very beautiful patchwork Seminole dresses on uh, for this occasion of being with us. I want to thank you all for coming today. But oh, you guys are you. So uh, we're going to close it out with this song uh, that she and I collaborated on, and, and now it's kind of a standard with the Native Praise Choir, and it's it's my great honor to have been a part of it. In the morning. When I rise, had hayat kin alekayo. Give me Jesus, Jesus, Amen, Jesus, Amen. Ah. Uh.